Greetings to all melanated people all around the world. It's really a joy, it's a blessing, it's a pleasure to be out here in nature and listening to the song of the river that's right next to me here. And it makes me feel so good, it makes me feel so much at peace. And I believe those of you who listen to me, I believe you can hear the song of the river also. Now I'm just going to take a, just a little moment of silence so you can hear the song of the river. Yes, I guess you would have heard the song of the river and soon I think I'll be doing some more videos back in the, the river again, bringing nature into your homes. You know, um, this morning it's what people normally refer to as Sunday morning. But you know, to me, every day is Sunday because there could never be a day without the sun. Okay? Doesn't matter, uh, matter if it's winter or if it's autumn or springtime or whatever. Once it's a day, it is because the sun has risen. There has been the rising of the sun. Even if you, 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 you haven't seen the sun in the sky, the sun is there. And that's why you have a day. That's why the Bible tells you that the sun was made to rule the day. Okay, so it's Sunday and um, we're going to have a little bit of Bible study. <laughs> and when I say Bible study, not, not the way that the Christians look at the Bible and study the Bible. When I talk about Bible study, I'm speaking about studying our own selves, coming to be more familiar with our own biography because we have discovered our true identity and we want to use our creative power more consciously to create our every desire so that we can live in a place of peace, joy and happiness because we know exactly who we are up on the face of this earth and we know how to carry ourselves, we know how to behave ourselves, we know how, how to monitor, monitor our thinking. We realize that it is our thoughts that is creating our reality and that we cannot check the laws of nature so we align ourselves with nature and walk along with nature. So with that being said, my brother and my sister, I want to speak to you concerning a, a particular scripture in the book of Revelation. It's Revelation 19, okay, and 13 I want to focus on, but I think I read from verses 12 to you. Now, when, when you look at the Bible, you see Genesis to Revelation. Genesis spelled G-E-N-E-S-I-S. Genes is. So uh, Genesis is like the seed, and Revelation is like the fruit. So basically the same thing. So Genesis and Revelation is basically teaching the same thing. And the entire Bible is dealing with the imagination of man because God is your own human imagination, the creator in man. So whenever you read in the Bible and you read about God or you read about Jesus Christ and you convey within yourself that it's speaking about a, a power or a man outside of yourself 2,000 years ago, you have the wrong God. You're serving the wrong God. Because God is within and is your own human imagination, which is the creative power in every man. So now I'm gonna I'm gonna read to you from, from Genesis. I have my phone right here. I'm gonna read from Genesis 19, chapter 19, verses 12 and 13. Okay, this is what it says. His eyes were as flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. My brother and sisters is teaching you that when you come to experience who you are and you discover this fire that is within you and you awake within yourself like a fiery being. When you speak about your eyes, your eyes is, speak, is, is your doorway to your soul. It is teaching you about this fiery being inside of you, being awakened inside of you. And you become one with that fire. You, you, you merge with that energy. And when that happened to you, 
you will come into your true identity. That's why I say you have a name. Name is speaking about identity and only you alone. Wonder because it's only true experience. Because the greatest mystery can never be known intellectually. It must be experience. So it is discovering your name. Discovering your identity. Discovering who you are. So the only fundamental sin upon the face of this earth is not knowing who you are. That's why the universal question is, who am I? Everyone is in search to know who am I. To, to, to discover their true self. Because we all was born in sin and shape in iniquity. And when it say, says that we're born in sin and shape in iniquity, it is speaking about we're born in a state of forgetfulness. A state called amnesia. Where we do not know exactly who we are. Because when you was one month, two months, three months, four months, five months, six months old, you didn't even know that you existed in the world. Even when you was up to one year old, you didn't even know that you existed in the world. So, only you alone will know your name. Only you alone will know your experience. And when you share your experience with others, many would not believe because they have not had the experience. Now I'm going moving on to verses 13, which is the main thing I really want to focus on. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word of God. Now, this he is not a person. It's a personification. And it is teaching you that this body of yours is like a robe. It's like a clothing. It's like a mask. It's like a dwelling place. A home. A house. Where God dwells. So when he said that he was dipped in a robe. He, he was wrapped, sorry, in a robe. Dipped in blood. If you cut yourself, you would see blood. You would bleed. So it's teaching you about your own self. That your own human imagination, which is the God in man, which is the creative power in man, is robed or wrapped in a robe that is dipped in blood. And then not speaking about a man 2,000 years ago. And his name is the word of God. It is teaching you that when you discover your true self, that you will come to realize that you are the living book. Interpreting the written book. Because what is a word? A word is a thought expressed. You the expression of God. That is why you have to find your creative power and work with your creative power by aligning yourself with nature because you, when you align yourself with nature you will come to discover that God and man are one and that you are God in flesh and that when you come out of the state of amnesia you will learn how to create your reality consciously because God couldn't become a man and pretend that he's a man. So we are basically a spirit having a human experience. So you have to come, you have to be totally in a state of forgetfulness. Then memory must return. And then you will understand the story of the prodigal son. So my brother, my sisters, I, I, I know that I've gotten this message across to you. I can even feel it in my spirit as I'm speaking to you and I know especially those of you who this message have been resonating with I want to say to you that I could take the entire chapter and explain the entire chapter for you but time will not permit me. The time will come when I will be able to be going live and we will be going through this whole book because when you become the living book, the written book isn't hard <laughs> for you to understand because it's not, it not about 
being intellectual, but it's about learning to align yourself with nature so that you will be able to align yourself with the creator who is in you because you are coming to know in, you are coming to discover the power of oneness the one universal consciousness so my brother and my sisters stop looking to a man outside of you or a power outside of you and remember whenever the bible speaks about the robe he was wrapped in a robe dipped in blood it is speaking about you okay and the one who's bringing message to you could have only be able to bring this message to you because he experienced the rising of the sun within himself okay and so with that i want to give you the sign the sign that they didn't want you to discover the sign that will allow you to be the light of the world and let your light so shine before men that they may behold your good works and glorify the God that they will have seen in you because of the wisdom that is coming out of you. This one eye, a single eye, is in Matthew 6, 22, where it says, if I be single, your whole body will be full of light. That's the reason why in Revelation it says, his eyes was as fire. It is the rising of the sun. The S-U-N in a S-O-N. So with that being said, my brother, my son, I say, peace, love you, I'm out.